The heart sets us apart. It beats and ticks, and over the years it's taken a few licks. But your heart doesn't just beat for you, it beats for your friends and family and your grandson Drew. So let's make it stronger, 'cause a healthy heart loves longer. Every heart deserves a specialist. Find yours at Dignity Health St. Rose Dominican Hospitals. Hello, human kindness. It's hard to tell which sites are safe and which are downright sketchy. But with Cox Panoramic Wi-Fi Advanced Security, it's easy. It protects all your connected devices, helps you avoid sketchy sites, and even sends real-time alerts straight to your inbox or phone. Plus, you can always check in with the Panoramic Wi-Fi app. So the only surprises are that there are no surprises. Learn more at cox.com/pano. Restrictions apply. Copyright 2020. Cox Communications Inc. All rights reserved. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. Hey, everybody, what's going on? Happy Friday! Hopefully, all of you have a weekend full of fun and excitement planned. Or, if you're old and lame like me, literally none of that's going to occur. Although. I do plan on doing some hiking this weekend. The weather is prime here in Las Vegas right now. A little bit on the warm side, but if you get out early enough, well, that doesn't even matter, does it? And as you all should know by now, if you you know follow my pictures and stuff, I'm big on going out at night and hiking at night anyway. So I'm pretty pumped up for the weekend. Hopefully, get some uh, nice Milky Way shots right around sunrise. That's the plan in the next couple of days. We'll see how it all shakes out. You know how what they say about the best laid plans and all, right? So pretty pumped about this weekend. Hopefully, all of you have some plans as well. I mean, look, how long has ever everybody been cooped up in their house for the most part? Time to start getting back to living a bit, yeah, folks. I mean, I get it. If some people aren't comfortable going out yet into public places and all of that stuff, I totally get it. But we just here in Vegas. The electric daisy carnival was just approved, and usually that thing draws like two hundred thousand attendees per day. So I'm uh, curious to see what the deal's going to be there. Obviously, I'm sure it's going to be a um, a, you need a vaccine or a negative test or something like that. But it looks like they're shooting to not have to follow the social distancing rules. And that'll set the tone for the event schedule moving forward. And I can't wait for this city to be opened as far as entertainment goes. I, I'm, you know, I'm ready to get back to work. I cannot wait for live music to pop back in so your boy can get back to it. Had a little bit of a hiatus from the industry for a little while. I was doing other things, working in, you know, uh, working at the sports book for uh, Canner Gaming, but. You know, with the whole pandemic and, you know, everyone being locked away and no concerts and stuff, it put things in, into perspective for me. So now that the city is going to start opening again and there's going to be live entertainment and concerts, I'm definitely going to be getting involved once again because I realize now that that's certainly my passion as far as, you know, work-related activities go. There's no place I'd rather be than working in live entertainment. So pumped to see that. And hopefully, you know, everything pans out, right? Seems like things are on the, uh, the, the downside here in America as far as the pandemic goes when you look at the numbers compared to where they were. And, you know, the, the, the vaccination program keeps on rolling. And, you know, hopefully things keep on keeping on because your boy needs the city to open back up, right? I, you know. Unfortunately, when you, you work in entertainment or you work in hospitality, there's no remote working from home. So, we, you know, you're up against it, right? And if you weren't smart financially and didn't have a couple of uh, shekels put away, then, you know, it's really a rough time. So, for all of my uh, colleagues and my friends that work in entertainment, you know, DJs, people that work in, you know, musicians... My good friends otherwise are right about to kick off a tour right now. They're about to do eight or nine... Uh, Tour dates. So things are starting to move and I'm excited about it. I hope that 
those of you out there who have been, you know, seriously affected by this financially and otherwise, I hope that there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel for you as well, right? Because I, I, I'm ready to go. You know, we're going to uh, hopefully, you know, I've talked about this uh, a lot, come out of this and hit the ground running like you know, the Roaring Twenties. And that was one hell of a decade, well, led to the, you know, depression and all, but no matter. That was one hell of a decade, and I think that we're going to see a lot of that. There's a lot of hangover from people who have been cooped up, and they want to let loose and rip roar. And you're starting to see that in Vegas already. It's starting to pack back up. So, interesting times ahead of us, and I, you know, I hope the numbers bear out, and I hope things don't uh, spin out of control like they are in a place like Brazil. But, you know, the circumstances are much different in a place like Brazil or even in Europe. You know, for all of the bumbling foolishness of the United States, they got that vaccine rolling out pretty quickly. So you got to give credit where it's due, and people are being vaccinated. You know, my, uh, my elderly relatives have all received the vaccination, which is great, right? You know, if that's something they decide they want to do and they think it's something that they need, hell, go for it. Glad that it's available for them. So I hope that moving forward, we really get rocking and rolling and we see everything open up. It, it's looking like May for Vegas when the capacity um, numbers are lifted. That's kind of what the talk is. So we'll see. Anyway, figured we uh, jump into our article. How about that? Enough of my uh, nonsense, right? So, folks, what have I told you about Leon Black's bitch ass? I told you he wasn't stepping down because his wife was sick. Or that he had health problems. Come to find out, old boy is being accused of sexual harassment and other sexually inappropriate crimes. It shouldn't shock you. What do I always say about fellow travelers? You don't just hang out with somebody like Jeffrey Epstein. Oh yeah, I'm Jeffrey Epstein. I had no idea what he was doing. And then it leads you to the question, did Jeffrey Epstein... Have the compromise on Leon Black, thus it cost old boy $158 million? We all know that Jeffrey Epstein liked to keep his secrets. We all know that he collected information, just like he collected his scientists and his academics. So that's definitely a question coming out of this, one of the first questions I have. And it throws... The investigation by a, by the, the Deckert, right into the garbage, right? How can anyone take that serious? So he, there is this whole sexual al uh, harassment allegation and other inappropriate behaviors. And Deckert had no idea, huh? Even though a uh, non-disclosure agreement had been signed by the young lady making these allegations. But Deckert couldn't figure that out, huh? Another case of these high-profile lawyers who don't know their ass from their elbow, right? It's either that or, well, they're just devious scumbags. I'll let you folks decide on that. All right, our article is from the New York Post. Headline, Leon Black surprise Apollo global exit came amid sexual harassment allegation. This article was authored by Josh Kosman. Leon Black's surprise exit, uh, surprise, what? Only if you weren't paying attention. I've been saying this is going to happen since last year, since 2019, two years ago. This is not a surprise. It was only a matter of time, and the writing was on the wall. It just depended on how far this was going to go. And obviously, in the case of Leon Black, this is accelerating into warp speed. Now... If there are criminal allegations here, that opens up probable cause to dig into his financials, too. And we all know that the money sent to Jeffrey Epstein, let's be real, come on, folks, through the trusts, down uh, through the, uh, the, the U.S. Virgin Islands, you think that money was on the up and up? I'd love to give the guy the benefit of the doubt, right? But no. Look who we're dealing with. Look at the viper we're dealing with. And now, not only do we have the relationship with Epstein, we have these new allegations to come out and really shine a light 
on Leon Black and the type of dirtbag he seems to be. Leon Black's surprise exit from the helm of Apollo Global Management last month came just days after several directors on the private equities giant board learned of accusations of sexual harassment against him by a woman he claimed was trying to shake him down over a consensual affair. The Post has learned. Oh, that's that's a, a likely story, right, with these dudes? Furthermore, you got a sick-ass wife, bro. What are you doing? I thought your wife was sick and you wanted to go spend more time with her. You should have spent more time with her instead of abusing this young lady, according to her allegations. You should have spent more time with your wife then, you sick bastard. As somebody who had a sick significant other laying next to her every single night as she battled cancer, lost her hair, I can't even imagine being such a scumbag to step out on her, have an affair, and not only an affair, a consensual affair, which is terrible in itself, but to take it to this level and to abuse a girl according to these allegations like this? Bro, there's a deep, dark pit in hell for you, and I hope that you rot there, and I hope that your wife leaves your bitch ass, and I hope that she takes your Edvard Munch scream uh, painting in the divorce. You dirty son of a bitch. What sort of piece of garbage lives their life like this? No honor. No loyalty. And certainly, no compassion. Black has already was already on track to step down as Apollo CEO by the end of July, when he unexpectedly announced on March 22nd that he would be leaving as CEO and chairman effective immediately. And when that happened, we talked about it then. We knew what the deal was. It was about the Epstein stuff. And now we, on top of that, we get these allegations. So, Leon Black has a big problem, folks. I've said it from the jump, and I will continue to say it. Old boy done effed around, and he's about to find out. Black, who Apollo, earlier this year, revealed had paid millions to dead pedophile financier Jeffrey Epstein, kudos to the Post for calling him what he is, a pedophile, following the latter's 2008 convictions for procuring an underage girl for prostitution, cited his wife's ailing health and his own health problems for the sudden change in plans. Of course he did. That's what these dudes always do, right? And when it, if it's legitimate, right, and your, your loved one is sick, your child is sick, your wife is sick, hey, look, man, Godspeed. I hope everything works out. I don't ever carry the sins over from the father to the son, husband to the wife, unless they're in on it together, right? So I don't wish anyone ill will here. And I don't take any joy talking about this shit either, folks, like some people might. This isn't a fun topic. I don't like putting people's lives on blast and shit. This isn't the kind of person I am. But this story was being buried. These people that were named in the court documents specifically, who we talk about here, by the way, needed to be brought to justice, at the very least answer for their roles. And nobody was stepping into that that gap, into that chasm. So, me and my beard decided, hell, we have a few questions, and we want some answers. But this kind of topic is not a fun one. Never fun to put people on blast without, you know, knowing all of the details. And like I say all the time, this case is is unique, because we do know all of the details from all of the years of court documents and earlier trials and leaked statements, and the most damning of all, the allegations of the survivors themselves. So this isn't a case that's unfolding and it's fluid, right? Where, you know, you're making these big allegations, like you're, you know, you're sitting up there like Nancy Grace labeling people tot mom and shit, right? This is something that's been going on for quite some time. And these people have avoided all sorts 
of notoriety and publicity for their actions because of their money and because of their power. And I know it's uncomfortable for a lot of people to hear and for a lot of people to think about and for the doors that it opens when you realize this. But your favorites in the news media, well, they enabled all of this shit for all of these years. And they're all culpable. All of these big name news types that were sitting in these newsrooms who had all of this power to investigate this one or that one, who sat on these investigations like Amy Robach and ABC and Disney and all of the rest who avoided this case like the plague. Those people are all enablers and all of them should be ashamed of themselves. Neither Black nor Apollo mentioned at the time that days leading up to the resignation at least four of Apollo's 12 board members had become aware of a series of little noticed but explosive tweets from Guzel Ganieva. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Um, everybody who listens to this show will tell you that I am absolutely terrible at the name pronunciation. So please forgive me if I uh, mispronounce that name. A former model who claimed to have been forced to sign an NDA in 2015 relating to allegations that Black sexually harassed and abused her, according to sources close to the situation. So not only sexually harassed, folks, all right, which is one thing, right? Which is, you know, okay, um, a lot of, you know, he said, she said, uh, could be some gray area with the sexual harassment, right? Conversations that were untowards. I get it. But then you take it the step further and you talk about being sexually abused and that knocks it into a whole nother realm, right? And this guy can't just fall back on that defense I was just saying, right? Oh, well, it was just some words and I'm from a different generation, that kind of shit. He can't fall back on that when it comes to the abuse because it doesn't matter what generation you're from. I mean, since we've crawled out of the caves, we've pretty much understood that that kind of shit is wrong, right? But no. People like him, he don't don't have no act right. He has all the money in the world, all the power in the world. He doesn't have to act right. In the tweet, uh, this young lady goes on to say, Although I am a private person, in light of the recent media coverage... I think I have an obligation to make a statement regarding Apollo Management CEO and Chairman Leon Black. I was sexually harassed and abused by him for years. So this tweet hit the uh, the web on March 17th of 2021. And as you all know, I don't spend too much time on Twitter, so totally missed my whole entire uh, line of vision. But... It's uh, it's powerful, right? That this girl comes out and she's coming out with these allegations and these kind of NDAs and situations like these, like this, have to stop. Because you have a couple of bucks, you can force people to be quiet about you abusing them and hurting them. And nah, man, that shit is unacceptable in my opinion. I know, Bobby. Take your opinion down to the gas station. Get yourself a cup of coffee with a dollar fifty. I understand, but guess what? You downloaded this podcast for my opinion, so you're going to get it. In a statement to the Post, Black acknowledged that he knew Ganavea, but denied that he acted inappropriately toward her. That's definitely going to be what he says, right? Look, this was consensual. We were in a consensual relationship, and I did not do anything untowards. That's going to be his defense. I foolishly had a consensual affair with Miss Ganavea that ended more than seven years ago, Black said in his statement. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't his wife sick back then? At the very least, she's in remission, right? You disgusting bastard, you animal. You sick prick. I I really hope that his wife divorces him and takes everything that he loves. Any allegation of harassment or any other inappropriate behavior towards her is completely fabricated. You Look, you know that that's going to be the defense. And I hope that um, Ms. Ganavia is prepared for, for that sort of assault coming her way because it's definitely coming. 
And my unsolicited advice to her is shake it off and keep on keeping on. Because they don't control the narrative anymore. There are many, many people who are paying attention to what is going on now. And many, many people who are rightfully pissed the F off. He also denied that her allegations influenced his decision to step away from the company faster than planned. In January, Black had signaled he would stay on as chairman after stepping down as CEO on July 31st. I mean, in what fantasy world did he think that was going to occur? He tried the Wexner move, right? And I say it all the time. I mean, I'm like a broken record with this. They all use the same playbook. They're all like the Wade Phillips retread NFL coach Rolled into one, all of these guys. The same exact playbook every single time. This is entirely a personal matter. This matter has nothing to do with Apollo or my decision to step away from the firm. That's called trying to control the narrative. Trying to steer the narrative. Well, guess what, Mr. Black? Unfortunately for you, I have a penchant for challenging the narrative. And your narrative here, sir, is garbage. Black added that he believes he was being extorted by Ganavia because he had allegedly made substantial monetary payments to her based on on her threats to go public concerning our relationship in an attempt to spare my family from public embarrassment. Yeah, so how much did you pay Jeffrey Epstein to keep the secret? Again, folks, I don't have any evidence of that, right? That's, uh... That is my uh, working hypothesis at the moment. Definitely could change, but right now, it's made, it's all becoming clear, isn't it? You know, when you got like a, your eyes are all uh, itchy and you, you know, you got some allergies going on, can't really see, then you pop in that good old uh, Visine, the allergy kind, and psh, magically you can open your eyes again. Yeah, starting to see what's going on here, folks, aren't we? The billionaire said he has referred the matter to the criminal authorities at the recommendation of his counsel and welcomes a thorough investigation. I'm going to bet dollars to donuts this is not the only gal that this has happened to. Again, I have no evidence of that whatsoever. None. But Occam's Razor says, right? It's just one, this one girl, that's the only time he's ever had a misstep, the only time he's ever exerted his extreme power to get what he wants? (laughs) Okay. It remains unclear whether any of Black's allegations against Ghani Avia would amount to criminal conduct, and there is no indication that charges have been brought or are being considered. They damn well better not be until there's a full investigation. Now, of course, if somebody brings false allegations against somebody, the penalty must be harsh for that. You're ruining people's lives if you're bringing these sorts of false allegations against them. But short of that, I mean, there's no way that she should be punished for coming forward here. Look, Leon Black is not a pillar of the community. All right, breaking news, folks. Leon Black is not a good guy. Not a solid individual. Not the type of dude you'd want to hang out with. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. I mean, really? He is not a good person, alright? Ghani Eva didn't immediately respond to Black's extortion claims. She said that in 2015, she signed a non-disclosure agreement, or NDA, aimed at keeping her quiet under duress but did not elaborate on the terms or whether she received a monetary benefit. Well, there's really nothing to go on there, so I guess we'll have to wait for more details to come out, right? We don't, you know, know about the the money one way or the other. I'm not going to speculate. No sense doing it right there. Although I am a private person, in light of the recent media coverage, I think I have an obligation to make a statement regarding Apollo Management's CEO and and Chairman Leon Black, began the first of her March 17th tweets. I was sexually harassed and abused by him for years. It started in 2008 when I met with with him to discuss work, Ghani Ghani Eva continued. 
While he understood my career aspirations, he could not understand me when I refused his sexual advances. They never could. They never can, right? You know, it's one thing to not get the 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 idea, right? You know, you you're getting the wrong signal from a gal that you think's digging you. You're just a normal guy. You're on a date. Oh shit! Well, sorry, bad bad uh, idea. She isn't digging me. This isn't that. Okay, this is somebody with extreme power. Using that extreme power and exerting that extreme power to get what he wants from somebody in a position that relies on him for their livelihood. It's a very, very, very precarious position to be in, I'm guessing. She declined to provide a copy of the NDA. A second source claiming knowledge of the matter agreed that an NDA was signed, but declined to elaborate. So again, we're going to have to see where this goes, right? We're going to have to wait for more details to come out. But it doesn't shock me, folks. And it starts to make things a little bit more apparent to what was going on, in my opinion. What makes more sense to you? $158 million to Jeffrey Epstein for his, air quotes, opinion? Or Jeffrey Epstein was extorting Leon Black because he had this compromise on him? NDAs became a flashpoint in the hashtag MeToo movement with commentators arguing that they had become a tool that protected powerful men against allegations of abuse. You know what? You want to start with the NDAs? How about we start with the Congress slush fund that is paid out, well, I don't know, $17 million to keep Congress and Senate's uh, 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 sexual allegations brought against them under wraps? Why don't we start there? folks, all right, with a nice audit. And let's find out which one of these senators and congressmen and women are sick bastards. I am breaking my silence now because I do not want this type of predatory behavior to continue happening to other women, she said in her third and final tweet, which as of Thursday was still posted on Twitter. In an exclusive interview with The Post earlier this week, prior to Black's extortion allegations, she alleged that Black's abuse was over a long period of time and it was tragic. So it started in 2008. Him and Epstein were boys then, right? Right around that time. Again. 2 plus 2 equals 4. And when you start putting the pieces of the puzzle together, well, you know. She emigrated to the U.S. from Russia, said she met Black at a 2008 Manhattan party when she was 25 years old. He tried for some time to help her get a job, she said, but claimed he wanted favors in return. All right, so she came over from Russia, emigrated over from Russia, and he said that he would help her get a job, but, you know, quid pro quo. That's how all these sick bastards work. It's never just, uh, um, you know... Uh, a, a, a move of, hey, look, I want to help out my fellow human being. I want somebody to get a step up. Nah, never that. It's always, I have to have a hook in you. I have to have a little comeback. I'm telling you right now, folks, I swear to you. I would rather do business with the mafia than with these scumbag hedge funds. At least the mafia has some honor. She declined to talk more specifically about her allegations, saying she was not yet comfortable sharing additional details about her claims. And that's going to be up to her when she wants to come forward, right? Uh, you know, you know me, I'm just a commentator on the news. I don't make the news, I don't break the news, I'm not a journalist, none of that stuff. This is, you know, I give you guys my opinion here and where I think things are going. Short of that, I, you know, I'm certainly not a newsman and I don't ever make pretend I am one. I wouldn't want to be a, a, a journalist. Among the directors who had learned of the tweets, the sources said, were Jay Clayton, the former chief of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, who was tapped as Apollo's lead independent director in a January overhaul meant to improve Apollo's corporate governance. Clayton didn't return a request for comment, and Apollo's spokeswoman declined to comment and noted that Black is no longer with the firm. That did not take long, huh? Talk about nuclear fallout. Leon Black is glowing as if he was taking a nice sunbathe down in the reactor of Fukushima, folks. 
Apollo Global, Leon Black's baby, has no comment because Leon Black has no affiliation with the company. How the mighty have fallen. Maybe Leon Black should have taken a little bit of a gander at the story of Icarus. Black's sudden departure from Apollo was widely reported. In January, an investigation for Apollo by the law firm Deckert found he had paid Epstein $158 million for tax advice and estate planning services between 2013 and 2017. After the close of the investigation, Black said of his involvement with Epstein that he was only guilty of poor judgment in his dealings with Epstein and that he had done nothing wrong. Oh, yeah, no, that's it. Just poor judgment. A man in charge of hundreds of billions of dollars. Ah, poor judgment. Let's chalk it up to a bad decision. No, you know what a bad decision is? Okay, I'll give you an example of a bad decision. Okay? Betting on the New York Mets to win the World Series? That's a bad decision. All right? Hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein? Oh, that's something else. There was no evidence that I had any involvement with Mr. Epstein's egregious conduct or engaged in any wrongdoing of any kind, he said in a letter to Apollo investors. Uh, that's a lie. According to this young lady, you're a liar, bro. And you don't have a great track record right now. So I am inclined to believe this young lady's allegations against you. Obviously, more evidence is going to be needed. Of course, this is America, you know. I won't speak for anyone else because obviously I don't do that. But here on the podcast, we follow the evidence here. Four days later, on March 26, Black said he would not run for re-election as chairman of the Museum of Modern Art when his term ends on June 30th. Folks, put a fork in him. Leon Black, he's done. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. To everybody who has donated to the podcast, thank you folks very, very much. All right, everybody, I will be back either later on tonight, depending on the news, or, if not, bright and early tomorrow morning. Have a great day, everybody. The heart sets us apart. It beats and ticks. And over the years, it's taken a few licks. But your heart doesn't just beat for you. It beats for your friends and family and your grandson, Drew. So let's make it stronger Cause a healthy heart loves longer Every heart deserves a specialist Find yours at Dignity Health St. Rose Dominican Hospitals Hello, human kindness Cox Panoramic Wi-Fi Advanced Security protects your connected devices Helps you avoid sketchy sites And sends real-time alerts So you're in the know Learn more at cox.com slash pano Restrictions apply Copyright 2020 Cox Communications Inc. All rights reserved